women are the best they truly are she is an actor she is an artist she is a ceo she is an entertainer she has climbed the highest mountains she has swam the deepest ocean she has been running organizations she has even led countries that is how powerful she is and this brand new series by serona called the she in me showcases us aspirational and inspirational stories of women from the middle east and we have with us a very special guest whose story of courage ambition and excellence will definitely touch the lives of people watching ladies and gentlemen today i have Raha Mohara. Thanks for having me. How That's are you? Lovely intro. I'm good. You have accomplished so much and it's been no Very secret. Lucky. You've been, uh, mashallah, one of the flag bearers of, uh, of this entire region, male or female. Thank You've you. been the first Arab woman to climb all seven summits. Um, the first Saudi woman to climb the Everest. <laughs> uh, and there's so much more that you've accomplished. Uh, how does it feel being that flag bearer of women, of girls, of the entire region? Uh, in the world. Wow, you just saying that is, <laughs> I feel such a big responsibility. Um, I feel honored, I feel humbled, I feel uh, so full and so lucky to be able to do what I love and be recognized for it and to also hopefully inspire others to do the same. I take it very seriously, I think it's a very big responsibility to be one of the first, to be the face of, of any movement. Um, so yeah, I feel all of these emotions, but in essence, I really think I'm just very lucky. Um, not everybody gets to live their dream and I got to live mine and help others find theirs. So I'm very lucky. There was actually a quotation where you said that uh, whether you're the first woman to climb the Everest, that is not important. Whether you've inspired others to do that, that's more important. That's a beautiful, Thank beautiful you. thought. Uh, have you continued that journey of inspiring people, meeting people? motivating people to doing what you did? Oh, I hope so. Um, contrary to belief, I'm actually a, a quiet, uh, private person. Okay, not always quiet, but I'm just, I'm not as, as bold as people think I am. I actually, I didn't want to be public, but I wanted to be public for the sake of inspiring others to, to listen and hear my story and find theirs. Uh, over the years, whenever I felt down or upset or frustrated, or whenever I felt, um, alone in where I am in pursuit of my dreams I was I was warmed and I was I felt support from all the people ar around me that heard my story and lived their dreams so as much as I can I'm trying to be a role model as much as I can I'm trying to be um, a beacon of light and hope for others I promise myself to never put anything online um, that isn't positive that isn't helpful that isn't um, food for thought or something that was interesting because there are so many people that have a lot of platforms that say nothing and I promise myself um, in, in my quest of being a good role model to always, always be someone that um, in general people can look up to, but specifically Saudi can look up to and even more specifically Saudi women can look up to. So it's a big responsibility, but I try as much as I can to lead by example. So this Raha everyone knows, right? That this is the one who's basically blown up on the scene over the last four years. You've been very very vocal about you know helping others and about motivating others but where did the journey start <laughs> like this is a region like i always say right this is a desert and you climb the highest icy mountains yes. mountains covered with snow mm -hmm. and this is very unique for this region it's like you know you live it's 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 something which came out of nowhere for people right they don't True. aspire <laughs> to do this they don't even think about this and it was a region which was quite conservative, especially like 20, 30 years ago. Absolutely, it changed a lot in the last 10 years. So how did the journey start? How was how was your childhood? How was it? I'll take you back to six-year-old me. I was always very different. I was an oddball. I never fit in. I was never like my girlfriends. I never did the same activity. I never liked the same activity mm -hmm. my girlfriends liked. I connected more with my brother's activity rather than my sister. Um, I was always very bold. I, I wanted to... To, to swim in the deepest part of the ocean, to, to, you know, to jump from the pier, to ride horses, to climb trees. And I was never afraid, I never had fear. And I, I was really bold in being different ever since I was little. And I've always dreamt of adventures and seeing the world. Really? I, I always dreamt of going on, you know, epic adventures. When little girls dreamed of, dreamt of different things, mm -hmm. I would watch the, the TV channels with all these interesting people who, who had a backpack and went around the world. And that's who I wanted to be. So yes, from a very young age, I was 
quite different and I never fit in. And I think that set the tone with my family. That set the tone that this is going to be an odd child. My father always says when they ask him, when did you know that uh, she was different or she was going to be, you know, a handful? He always says when she opened her eyes, she was, uh, he always says that you were always very, very different in, in how you see the world. So I will take you back to six-year-old Raha who just wanted to be an adventurer. That's how it started. And did you get that support system, you know, from within the family and also the broader community? Because this is something <laughs> like not too many girls will be like, I want to do this in life. I want to be an adventurer. I want to see the world. Whereas again, with all due respect, at that point in time, you weren't even allowed to see your own community, your society, even the... You weren't, street. it was a different time. You weren't allowed to be as public as you are Correct. now. Correct. Um, the truth is yes and no. Okay. Uh, they weren't as supportive. My mother was always supportive, but my father wasn't mm -hmm. always supportive in my endeavors because he just didn't understand what I was doing. He thought, you want to go climb mountains? Are you insane? Mm -hmm. um, so in the beginning, my father was completely against it. Uh, he, he just thought that it was, what are you doing? Yeah. But I love that with time, he grew to, to change and evolve and he became my biggest supporter with time. He, he understood that we have difference of opinions. He understood that we're different. He understood that he doesn't need to agree with what I do, but Correct. he needs to respect my choice. And I like to see my father as the society and as a collective. He's okay. a reflection of them. So in the beginning, just like my father, the society he was, was con very conservative and very against it. And I think because they didn't understand and the unknown and the new is always not easy to to comprehend, especially right. for the older generation. Correct. And some from, from new generation as well were like, what is she doing? And it's also what they've grown up with, right? It's a mentality. It's their status quo. It's a mentality they were grew up with. It's always around them. But with time again, and with the great evolution that's been happening for in the kingdom, it changed. And now I'm celebrated as an athlete um, in my home. And it's just, I'm so grateful to see how my father evolved and as, as well as how the general public has evolved. So again, six-year-old Raha to like 10-year-old Raha who was having that conflict with <laughs> her father. How did how did that make you feel? And how did you like get over it? Because there are a lot of girls out there. I, I would say past 10. Like I would say until, you know, until recently. <laughs> it was difficult because there's a fine line you walk mm -hmm. between debate and arguing. Correct. There's a fine line between pushing the envelope and being rude or disrespectful. Absolutely. It's a very thin hair that you... And I think today everyone's forgotten that, right? Absolutely. I'm it's, glad you mentioned that. Everyone's forgotten that. It's a it's, it's a, it's a warfare. It. It's, a, it's, it's an online warfare where people feel that they can say whatever they want to say Just and get away with it. Just because you can, you shouldn't. Just because you can doesn't mean you should. should. Correct. And I, I think that's the fine line that you need to learn as a dot, as a human to discuss without argue to question without disrespect. So I we think have, trolling has become glorified. People mm -hmm. somewhere sitting in a corner of the world will troll you like there is no tomorrow. Trolling and uh, trolling, being judgmental and thinking you, you can do whatever you want, you, whatever you can do in, in the name of mm -hmm. independence and, the main, and, and in the name of freedom of speech, freedom of speech <laughs> and freedom of expression. So I think the best, one of the best lessons I've learned in my journey is to learn to be humble and human in pursuit of who you truly are without harming others. So that conversation was very difficult because in his eyes, you're, you're a going, rebel. Well, I am a rebel. Okay. But you're, you're, they, they accept that, but you're going against my words. Mm -hmm. You're going against what I think is, is right or wrong. And in my mind, I'm asking for what I believe is, is my right. So you, you need to be able to find that balance and please, and I say this as a, as a public announcement to everybody, in pursuit of your dreams or in pursuit of your expression or in pursuit of who you are, don't harm others or disrespect others mm. in the name of just, I can't do this because it's my right. Correct. And I say this across the board in, in how you treat people or how you perceive someone else's uh, social media account or someone else's mm. choices. I think you 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 feel it. Like yeah. people are just like monsters online. They are. They are online. And it's a very fair point, right? That you it's okay being selfish as long as it's not at the expense of somebody else. Exactly. It's a human trait to be selfish. It's only an ugly side of selfishness when you take from other people's self esteem, other people's uh, you know peace in order for you to feed yours. It's crazy how, how, how horrible it's become. And I always tell people, if you need help in, in realizing if you are a, or a monster or a troll online, ask yourself this simple question. 
if I was sitting in front of this person, Bravo. would I have the courage to say, say it? it? If you answer no, then swallow yes. <laughs> your opinion and keep it to yourself. And if the answer was yes, then it's probably a positive thing. Exactly. And I still say you can say almost anything with the right tone. Almost. You can say almost anything if it's with the right intentions. So please be kinder to one another. Please be more respectful. Just because you are hiding behind the username. Uh, this which, might, might, which might not be your real name. It could be anything. It could be anything. Doesn't mean you have the right to hurt others or criticize others harshly. On this note, right, this, this criticism, being harsh, especially women, not in this region, but generally, in general. over the last 20, 30 years, have gone through that. I would say even in this region. Of course, in this region as well. And, and they've gone through that. Yeah. They've had to first, they were first subjected to being oppressed, uh, you know, in terms of you can't realize uh, your dreams, your passions. There are specific roles which have been identified to now with all that liberation coming in, getting backlash on that because people can't handle this new yeah. woman 2.0. How do you feel that as, you know, as a person, as a leader, as somebody who is out to inspire women, how do you think that that can be tackled in a constructive way? Because as you said, right, it can become very disruptive very, very fast, uh, especially to the younger generation who are feeling this heat. How do they work past it? Two sides of, of this. There's a side that is receiving criticism and there's a side that's giving criticism. Mm. Here's my advice to the side that is giving criticism. Mm. Very similar to what I said, be human, be real, be authentic and, and don't be rude in, in your opinion. Your, your view might be even reached if you say it in the in right, the right way. way. Um, and add to that everything I said earlier. <laughs> the side that receives criticism, remember, that most criticism comes from a dark place in someone else. Most hate comes from a person that hates themselves. Mm. Because if you're a healthy, happy person, you won't care, care about anything, what anyone yeah. else yeah. is doing. Most hate, ladies and gentlemen, comes from someone else's dark place. Mm -hmm. So please remember that and try to shield yourself. But if you still get hurt by a message, because it happens no matter how powerful you are in your in your mentality. And I'm very, very chill with my social media, but sometimes I get Some one message that comes and it's just like... And then you're like, where are you? Where are you? How do I hunt you? No, how I do I find you? Down, but it just hits me yeah, hard. hard. I remind myself they are looking at the reflection of who they are in you. Try not to hate them for it. Try not to let it hurt you. Mm. Um, and try to make peace with if you do incredible things or if you shake you know the tree or if you do something that is different criticism is part of the journey it's a it's a tax a price you must pay for being someone who's public for being someone who has done something different done something different I and mean, you, it need not be public right it's, yeah sometimes you're just you minding your business but it's it's a it's a price you pay if nobody knows who you are and you're minding your business you won't get as much criticism but you get criticism because when you're you doing something, there, right? because you're, you, you know, you're, you're are there. Um, and the last layer of all this, try to forgive those who come for you. Try to forgive those who, who say these things, because in forgiving them, you, you release, you release yourself from the burden of being frustrated by them. It is very true. Try not to hold the anger, because trust me, I've been in a situation where I was so angry and frustrated. To try very hard to make peace with that side. <laughs> I've heard this very beautiful thing, right? That anger and frustration is like a glass of water. You hold it on for 15 minutes, it's fine. You hold it on for half an hour, it gets heavier. In 24 hours, it'll give you excruciating pain. And in like, if you do it for a week, then your hand pops off. Anything, that's and a glass of water, even, yeah, even the feather. Feather. And this is what they say anger, frustration is that if you let it go, it's easy. Otherwise, you're the only one who's going to um, yeah. get hurt. But on social media, that's a very interesting aspect of your personality, right? Because there are two sides to Raha. One is the one... Two main. <laughs> two, yeah. One is the one who's gone up in the mountains. No, shower like, for 20 days. Yes. 20 days. <laughs> and then there is this other sort of glamorous public figure yeah. who's like endorsing brands, who's 
on the red carpet, was being very vocal. It's very rare having one person have these two sides. How did you... Contrast. Complete yeah, con you know. how, Did you stumble upon one or were you first into one? Like what was your first love and then how did you end up with the second one as well? I think all women have two drastic sides. Mm -hmm. Whether it's, uh, you know, you know the, the, the badass CEO and then the soft mother at home or, um, you know, a doctor, a very serious doctor, but also a soft side. Correct. I think I think most women have this. In my case, it manifested very drastically. Yes. Because, you know, I don't shower for 22 days, and then I come back and I'm shooting for a big brand. <laughs> um, I think it's it's uh, it's essentially a tool in order for you to to adapt into this uh, into this new world we're in. You can't be one thing. I think if I just climbed uh, the seven summits and disappeared, I wouldn't have as much impact. I... If I didn't look very feminine, if I wasn't. If, if, if I didn't shoot with some of the top brands in the world, I'm just going to appeal to the side of women who care about sports. And I'm not going to touch the side of women that don't really care about sports. So I think it's, it's an important tool in order for you to reach as many people as possible and also to make a career out of it. Because mountaineering, mountaineering itself, unless you're a guide, doesn't really pay. It does <laughs> not. Often. Unless it actually, you find treasure on the top of the Unless you find treasure, <laughs> if you're lucky, um, then it doesn't really pay, right? So how do I earn the money back that I lo that I paid mountaineering by social media and by PR and and so on and social media social media is a great free PR if you know how to use it it's a great PR tool so absolutely but which came first I think I was I was always an athlete I was always sporty adventurous but a creative one so even when I was working in in, in an agency and I worked in a, in a design in a creative agency for a few years I was always very athletic so I, I can't say which one was dominant or which one came before the other but the marriage of the both were, were incredible for my career had I not had the training in design and media I wouldn't have been able to style my my, my look had, had, had I not been um, uh, taught to be a public speaker to present projects, I wouldn't have been able to be a speaker uh, and then in TV and radio. So I think they are, I, in my journey, I'm very lucky to have these two tools. And it's good to have multiple traits, uh, multiple uh, ways of right. making a living because when one door closes, you, yeah, you, know, you, you have the other one. To especially fall. after COVID, many people had to shift and pivot. And in my case, I leaned towards the design side when I couldn't travel and go on adventures. So I'm so lucky to be able to marriage, ma merge and marry these two things together and produce a profile that's very unique in the region. It is. It's it's not just in the region. I think in the world, it's very, very unique. Very unique. Yeah. And <laughs> you said this very well, right? That a woman will always have multiple sides. Absolutely. And it's about embracing that. Because for a guy, we're very straightforward. We have one side. That is the side we live with for the rest of usually. our lives. Yeah, usually. We're the same at 13 and we're the same at 83. It, yeah. it doesn't change. And I think m men split their character. It's it's uh, it's not 50-50. It's not or 20-20. Or I think men split like 10% this, uh, you know, just... For example, 10%, if you love one sport, you're 10%, and then the rest is the career, you know, yeah. or opposite. Yes. I And I feel like women are like 20% this, mom, 20% this, 20%. Not 20, 17% this, 23, very, yeah, very, very, very minute. Yeah, absolutely. Um, in this journey of your life where you've done so many things, and I know it's it's it might be a redundant question, but is there anything, <laughs> one thing that you enjoy the most, where you feel, even if financially it's not, perhaps the most lucrative it's something which when you do you're like okay this i love everything that i do but this gives me happiness and peace beautiful question not redundant one of the best questions actually i've ever gotten travel 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 doesn't pay well uh because it's usually collaboration it costs a lot these days it costs a lot these days and it's it's not as it used to be and it's very expensive and time consuming and hectic and but Travel is a passion for me. If I can find a job that ma that makes me travel, my dream job is to have a travel show. A tra I, I was going to say I that. Get, I get paid to travel. Travel the world. Um, and then I think I'll be set, and then I'll be I'll be chilling. Travel is a, my passion because I love meeting people, new cultures, learning history, uh, and it, I never get tired of it. Even when I'm tired, like I had an incredible summer. Mm -hmm. I had. Spain, I had uh, uh, Botswana, Namibia, South Africa, and Morocco, and our, our hearts and prayers as well go to Morocco because after I left, yes. the, you know, that happened. 
and I'm so fortunate to, to be able to see these people and, and meet so many incredible people. I come back exhausted and I'm yes. thinking about the new trip, <laughs> even before in the plane, in the yeah. airport. When I finish the trip, I'm like, me. So, I... what is the next place? Sorry, what's the. Um, in, in, in work or pra of pleasure? Pleasure. So, I think after finishing the seven summits, there's only one mountain that I didn't climb mm -hmm. that I want to climb, which is Mount Fuji. Okay. So I'm dying to go to Japan, not just because Japan is awesome, but because I want to climb. Coincidentally, it's my next bu bucket <laughs> item, Japan. And not, not climbing mountains or anything, but just, just chilling. Japan. Yeah. You've been? <laughs> I have not I'm been I'm dying yet. to go to Japan. Yes. And also, I wish to go to the Caribbean. So that's part of the world. It's a beautiful place. I've yes. Been so I've, I've I've been to Hawaii, but I haven't been to, to the, the Caribbean. I haven't been to the Trinidad, to, Tobago, all of that. Jamaica. Yeah. I, I've been to Cuba, but I haven't been specifically in you know that, that specific uh, uh, crescent. So in in the Americas. So that's what I want to do. Uh, maybe maybe next year. <laughs> Inshallah. 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 So this uh, this summer, this beautiful summer that you had where you went to so many places and travel is a passion for you. When you meet people over there, like even these six places that you visited, the women are different in every single place, right? Because of their culture, their background, the society, how they've been brought up, even the development of the country and the offering that you have in terms of the infrastructure. Which one place maybe the women really spoke to you where you were like, oh, okay, these wow. are... It's not one place, it's a type of woman. Okay. It's not specifically one nationality. But there's a type of woman that I uh, that are just incredible. Uh, this year I had an amazing uh, uh, year going to multiple places. I met a lady in, in, in Iceland who has a home for anyone that needs a, a, a home to go to wow. if she was abused. I met an incredible lady in Ghana who taught her community to harvest and sell Shia butter. I met an incredible doctor in the in Saudi Arabia who is an ocularis, which is a new word I learned, ocularis. And she's a doctor that if God forbid you lost your eye, you she she matches your eye to an a, an, a, an a synthetic eye she hand draws. Wow. So that you can look like you have both eyes. So this type of woman to me, this type of individual is the woman that sings to me. It's the woman that matters, that wants to matter. Mm. It's the woman that wants to make a difference. So I'm so lucky that I met, I meet these incredible women, uh, and throughout my life. Um, and it's not, and I'm so proud to say that it's not in a specific nationality or culture. Or, no, they are everywhere. They are in all walks of life, and I think that's the that's one of the main reasons why I love having a platform to share other people's incredible oh, journeys. Yeah. That's beautiful. That's beautiful. This was also the first time I've heard of what was the word again? Ocularis. Ocularis. Yeah. That's your learning for today. Ocular. Ocularis. That's such a that's such a beautiful I didn't know that. And neither did I just I there's a few of them only in the world and even fewer in the Middle East and she had to go and learn. So shout out to the, to her. She's Absolutely. she's incredible. Absolutely. Coming to the Middle East, because you know this is this is where where we are. This is where we've grown up. The world is shifting very very fast, yeah. like at at a pace that, literally, it's an example, yeah. right? It's an example for the Incredible. world of how fast things can progress. What do you think are the tools, or what are, what do you think are the facilities that are available to young women today in this region, which can help them, let's say, either break the mold or explore their potential? It's just a matter of them realizing it versus something which was not there about 20, 30 years ago. Follow your passion. If I didn't follow my passion 10 years ago, I wouldn't be sitting here today. Mm -hmm. And 10 years ago, I was told if I left my career, then I would never be able to make a living. Uh, I, I would be making a big, the biggest mistake of my life. Yes. But I followed my passion. And my passion was to be an adventure athlete. So it's very important, I understand, to have a living, to make a living, but find space in your life to, f to have a passion. You never know where, where that passion leads you. Another example is I started beach volleyball because I loved mm -hmm. beach volleyball years ago, just for fun. And everyone, most people told me, you're insane, why are you wasting time? And I used to say from year to year to go and train with top coaches around the world. Wow. In Spain, in the US, and all around the world. In Cuba, I mentioned, was for volleyball. And everyone thought I was wasting time. You're wasting time, wasting money, yeah. Last year, I got a phone call from the, the Saudi Games saying that they would like me to compete for Saudi Arabia to play the Saudi Games. Wow. And not in my, my wildest Why? dreams in a million years that I think that I would A, play in Saudi Arabia and B, win. So I won and I wore that medal for, for every single person or 
Saudi woman, but every single person that had a dream that no one believed in. Believed in. So imagine if I didn't have the courage to just play for the passion of the game, I wouldn't have been good enough to to compete. And you persisted with it. it I persisted. A, it wasn't a, just a one yes. summer. Yeah. Seven years yeah. of every summer. I only stopped going to the same camp because of COVID, because I couldn't go during the COVID year, and then the camp changed. So I I I I, I urge you to to find your passion. I know that not everybody will climb Everest that's in the Himalayas, because that's not something everybody wants to do. But every single one of us has an Everest to climb. Every single one of us has so has a mountain, whether it's a dream a project or career or family. Find that Everest. Find your Everest because you never know where, where it's going to lead you. So let it come from within. Find your passion, yes. and then actually be persistent in trying to go. And, and then you can make a living out of your passion and not get burnt out. You know, a living of and a full life. And a full life. Absolute full Absolutely. life. The, the the happiness will come from within. It's not easy because you will go broke and you will go tired. It's not easy. It's not a straight line. Peaks and valleys. But if you follow your passion, then then it's absolutely worth it. That's so beautiful. That's so beautiful. Well, thank you very much. On that note, we'll do our last segment. Sure. Which is a Sirona series of questions. Oh God. This is rapid fire. Okay. It'll come at you like life throws. Okay, I'm ready. I'm ready. Life life throws. A I lot get of very things. nervous with rapid fire. Okay. Trust me, I get nervous asking the questions. Okay. <laughs> All right. So here we go. When were you the most scared in life? When I when I when I was bored. When I didn't know what to do. When you didn't know what to do. When, when I was you bored. Were, what is your biggest single achievement in life? If you had to pick one. Living the true version of who I am, the best potential of myself. Beautiful. What is one thing you cannot live without? Family. What advice would you give a 14-year-old Raha? Uh, <laughs> wear some block. <laughs> <laughs> Save for 2020. Uh, sorry, multiple advices. Yes. And never ever let someone um, make you doubt yourself ever. Love who you are and, and be true to who you are. Who has inspired you most in life? The, the unknowns. Every single person who was born ordinary that managed to live an extraordinary life inspired me. That's beautiful. And now you're inspiring people to actually break the mold and, and live extraordinary lives uh, from, from the ordinary. The best thing that you like about the UAE? Oh, it's, I feel like every time I land back in Dubai, it's a hug. <laughs> it's just so, it's so clean and safe and comfortable and everyone respects and I love it here. I've been here for a long time and I just feel like it's a beautiful place to be where there's an opportunity for everybody. So I can't pick just one place, but I think it's the whole package. It's, it's just, how do I say this in one, one, one sentence? I think you already have. It feels like I a feel hug. Like it's, the, every, it's time, every time I land back in Dubai, even when it's really hot, I feel like this. It's a, it's a sweaty hug, but it's a hug. Sweaty hug. One thing that one should never say to a woman. Only one? I'm okay. joking. I'm joking. Let's let's extend this. I think Only we can do one. this. We can go on for the next one. Um, what she can and cannot do. Never tell to a woman what she can. A human, any man or woman. Never, never uh, perceive that you have the right to tell someone what they can and cannot do. Lovely. One thing that you would have done differently in life. Would have started earlier. Your would, travels? Uh, being an adventurer ah, being earlier. An adventurer. And when did you start? 25. And I mean, I've always traveled with my family. Always traveled. But those are family vacations. Those yeah. Are like... But I wish I, I wish I was. Uh, I, I wish I started earlier, just because I think I would have had more time to do more things. <laughs> Not because I regret anything in particular. The most obnoxious thing anyone has ever told you, whether it was a pickup line or a statement or a or a judgment. I don't think we have time for that one. <laughs> um, most obnoxious thing that I was weak. And how did you respond? By climbing the seven summits. Ah, that is beautiful. <laughs> and the last question for you is that for all the girls watching out there, all the women watching out there, uh, who want to bring out the she in them, the she in me out, uh, is there any message that you'd like to give them? If a Saudi girl from Jeddah, who thought the only ice she would see is in the fridge, and never really imagined she would live her dream, managed to climb the seven summits and touch the sky, then what makes your dream too far from reach? I'm not, I'm not special. I'm a little bit maybe stubborn and disciplined in my, in my pursuit of my dreams, but I'm not special. And if I can live my dreams, then yours are not too far from reach. So thank you so much for this, for this, uh, for this wonderful talk. And I hope that uh, the she's out there who are listening to you, who have heard this, will be inspired to bring out the she in me 
and uh, and achieve what uh, what they set out to whatever is special to them thank you for having thank me. you so much bra it was a pleasure thank it's mine thank you ladies and gentlemen for this uh, episode and we'll be back every week with uh, another aspirational and inspirational story till then take care and god bless